when they start talking to me about the future, they said, okay, Intel's back. All right, we are here at another CES uh, with another Bit by Bit. I'm here with Jim Johnson uh, of Intel. Why don't you, Jim, give, a, give your title and tell people, you know, the group that you run. Yeah, I'm Senior Vice President. I uh, am the General Manager of the Client Computing Group, which consists of PC and Edge products. Awesome. So this is a big launch for Intel, right? The, uh, the long-awaited launch of Panther Lake, which I think has a couple of very important milestones that we'll talk about. Um, but maybe just start with kind of the high level, why does this moment matter? And then just sort of the broader strategy for Intel in 2026 when it comes to client. Yeah, so if I first start with Intel, we had a goal of regaining process leadership in Foundry. And that was not a you know, one step goal. We took many milestones and it actually we challenged our customers through this process because we went from 14 nanometer to 10 nanometer to Intel 7 to Intel 3, and now we've landed on 18A, which is a leadership node and tightly integrated with the Panther Lake Core Ultra Series 3 product. And now we can actually ease the design efforts for our customer because we will stay on this node for multi-generations, and we're gonna deploy what they've really come to expect from us, which is a single package type up and down their stack for mobile, and then the same thing for desktop over time, and then have socket compatibility multiple generations. That's like when, when they start talking to me about the future, they said, okay, Intel's back. Right, right. That to me, I think was one of those, I mean, we've followed Intel yeah. for a very long time and have many conversations with your customers. And so there was always a, uh, we don't know what's happening. Like we want the, the, the predictability, right? The That's cadence right. to come back. And I think that was, you know, a, 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 at least an unknown sort of issue, right? When some of the, the, the bumps that Intel hit in the road where, you know, customers just, it wasn't just predictable, right? They, they didn't know, right? And so I think having that stability, you know, as you point out, it is key. Now, Panther Lake comes with, I think, some also good milestones, both in terms of performance and efficiency, some of the things that, you know, the market's expecting now, right, in terms of thin and light designs, the ability to have multiple SKUs, right, from, you know, low end all the way up to performance. So maybe talk about the product. We talk about some of those benchmarks that you're happy with, because again, right, I think we've been on this journey with Intel for a long time about, <laughs> performance per watt and wanting to hit lower wattage systems. And I feel like from what I've seen now, I've seen a number of things, including, you know, the possibility that we could see a fanless x86 yeah. design, which to me is, it, it feels like in a significant moment. Yeah, I guess I have to start one step back with Series 2, because Series 2 had two different architectures in the market at the same time. And our primary goal with Series 2 was Lunar Lake, if you remember that yep. launch. Yep. And it was to prove that x86 could deliver power efficiency. Right. But then we used the Arrow Lake Series 2 to deliver high performance. And so we took the goal of how do we deliver that performance at Lunar Lake efficiency? So when we architected Panther Lake, we, arch we, we built the foundation on the power efficient architecture of Lunar Lake, but changed everything, how the fabrics work, how you can run workloads in our low power island. The low power island has four dedicated low power cores with their own cache. So when you're doing browsing or you're doing web streaming or you're doing a video conference, like I, I, I found this stat amazing. We spend more time using our PC for video conferencing right. than we get holiday hours. <laughs> Great, <That's> so <laughs> and encouraging. So, so it's really important, but now with this new architecture, you just live in this low power domain and you never turn on the P cores or the e-cores for multi-threaded right. performance. And it's really changed, it's really changed how we can support OEM designs up and down their stack. Right. Yeah, I think the the flexibility, right, is one of those things. I mean, as we looked at architectures throughout, you know, the time that we've, you know, been studying architectures, there's always been something to an architecture that scales up or down. And yes. I think, you know, when we looked at what was happening with Panther Lake, that to me was one of the obvious design points, which was, yeah, it can scale down, it can scale up but still with all those benefits, right, of performance or lower wattage, but not sacrificing, right, some right. of those things. So I think the, the platform approach is actually one of the more interesting things yeah. that I think you guys have taken for efficiency. So maybe talk a little bit about that, right? I mean, we've wanted to see a whole product architecture be, you know, more disaggregated mm -hmm. designer chiplets. You're on that now. There's things that I think 18A has brought to um, that design in terms of optionality. But maybe talk about, right, the significance also to the, uh, to the efficiency, right, in performance gains, you got 
on this idea of it's not just monolithic systems anymore, monolithic chip anymore. It's a systems of chips That's that work right. together to pr to get to these benefits. Yeah, and I, and we've so exactly right, and we've gotten um, more determined on how we're going to use these chiplets and tiles. And I'll use one example: our GPU, our integrated graphics GPU. We think integrated graphics, an integrated AI on a GPU, is going to be the future, right? Because of power efficiency. And so we did a significant investment, not only in the hardware of the tile, and we can bury the size of the tile in the same package to accept smaller GPUs for, for commercial users, or maybe it's smaller GPU because they're gonna pair a discrete card with it. Right. But then we built a 12XE monster version of the GPU to run games and AI on chip. You don't have to go to a discrete card for any support. And it's actually surprised our customers. Mm -hmm. And I think that'll be one of the big surprises in the market when users get their hands on them. Yeah, I agree. I think you know the GPU side, even the efficiency in the, in the GPU, and I think this has been <clears throat> an interesting topic that I want to go to now just on this idea of tops, right? We yeah. have this whole like, I need X number of NPU tops. And I think there is a very good systems approach to this. Like e each part has its own role. Like we get the NPUs great for persistent workloads that need to run at very, very low tops per watt. But the GPU is also a great place to run workloads, and I think that that sort of had a bad a bad rap before. Yeah. So maybe talk about some of like the importance of one, like system tops, knowing that the right the right core is doing the right job right for the software workload, and how those can now harmoniously work together for AI edge work workloads and any AI oh, yeah, software. That, okay, thanks for reminding me of that. So <laughs> let's start with AI first, because we've been doing AI since AIPC since late. 2023, right. when we launched our first AI PC. And it really was improving things we do, whether it's video conferencing with background blur and things like that. And then we started doing more gen AI, and, and now people are using like transformer models. And I would just say we created a breadth of AI-enabled software with our partners. I think what's different now as we go to, to 2026, in building that footprint out, there's now the equivalent of 40 data centers worth of compute in PC and edge devices based on AI PCs from Intel. And we're now seeing AI leadership companies like Perplexity saying, wow, I can start doing things locally and save money, improve privacy security, let people have more control of their own data. Right. And so now what we're seeing, especially with our super builder tool set, they're now moving workloads off the cloud to be more local, but we're figuring out how to utilize both. Think of their cloud capability as the master orchestrator, or if they need to access monster LLMs right. to, to do some real sophisticated planning. But we on the client can do a lot of things with our local data and keep it there. So how we orchestrate that and communicate that is our big project in 2026 with companies like Perplexity. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And I think they were on stage, right, talking a lot about what you know their plans were. And, and I think you see a lot of software developers do that too, right? Because one of the challenges has been, and even when you talk to you know AI developers who do a lot of this compute in the cloud, was there's just not enough, right, on the edge. Even if it's a hybrid world, like That's they right. don't know what they can really take advantage of the edge. And so I think that that part will help. Um, all right, I want I want you to gush on Intel Foundry for a little bit okay. because I, I think there's a couple of you know important things, right? For us, we've always been looking at. You know, we wanted Intel, right, to come back to process leadership. Yeah. I think it's important that we have process leadership on U.S. soil by a U.S. company. I think that's sort of like a non-negotiable strategically and right nationally. Yeah. But at the same time, um, there's a lot of innovations, right, to 18A. There was a lot of risks that got taken into 18A. And I know there was some strategy and de-risking nodes prior. But to get to this point, I think it's significant, right, to have leading edge leadership as well as a product that is performing on all these variants. So maybe just talk about the role Foundry played, the role you guys worked with uh, Intel Foundry to design this product, and, and, and any innovations that caught your attention um, that they had that, that you guys designed into this product. Well, probably the first Uber thing that they did or we did is adopted EUV. And we started that with Intel 3 on our Series 1 processor, and that's really important because that's how you actually get really, really good performance and efficiency. And then with 18A, we now have the latest EUV equipment running in our fabs, and we're printing circuits as we speak in two fabs for Panther Lake Series 3. On top of 
EUV, we added two new innovations, which is a ribbon FET all or, gate all around transistor and backside power delivery. And the bottom line of those two things is we now can have signals that are separated from power delivery, so they're more accurate, I would say, if, if that's the right word. Sure. And so now we get much more density. We have, we have like 15% better density of transistors on a chip and better performance per watt. And that's showing up in product. Right. And so to me, like what I, wrote, what I like about uh, working under Lipboo is like, let's not say what we're gonna do, let's just go do it right. and show it. And I think that's what Series 3 is gonna do for us. Yeah. I'm pretty confident in the product and the feedback from our customers has been really positive. Of course, they're always very demanding, but, uh, but uh, there's, there's some amazing designs yeah. that are shipping. Yeah, maybe just talk a little bit about you know what you again you're hearing from customers. I think you know it's good for folks to hear right that you guys have taken heat right ad ad admittedly right in the past. But I think you know when you just look at design skews that I think will come out this year, the breadth and depth of por portfolios, and and really you know we're in this interesting moment where PCs could have a very big year. Right, we've got you know according to our estimates almost 25 percent of uh, of, 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 of a range of enterprise you know uh, pcs across the board need to be refreshed right which That's is right. north of 200 250 million units that just can't run windows 11 yeah. right for example which to me it's kind of like you, you can't run windows 11 you, you might need to replace so i think the hope is this is a big year and i think a lot of things align right for intel in terms mm -hmm. of, of of product scope around products so maybe just talk about engagement with the customers what they're excited about and then Kind of what you hope right for the year for well, intel yeah i'll start with the refresh comment you made like one, one of my buddies in in the market he runs smb for a large one uh, large one of our large customers and his his uh research has shown only about 40 percent of his customers have transitioned to windows 11. Mm -hmm. so at least in that segment and sub there's sure. still tailwinds there right the feedback i get from from our customers it really really comes down to two things we had this really good performance on Series 2 Arrow 8. Right. We can now run that performance literally at 40% lower power. Right. And that allows them to lower TDPs, that thermal design points of their systems, change their cooling systems, put in bigger batteries, because they're all driving for multi-day battery life over time. Right. And so that's probably the one thing. And then the other thing they were wondering is, as we deliver more performance, are we really still gonna be as power efficient as right. Lunar Lake was? Right. And I had several bets for coffee with my engineering uh, buddies at customers, and they're buying me coffee. <laughs> good, good to hear you, you won those yeah. bets. <laughs> it's not easy and it's not always consistent because they get to make their own choices. Sure. But what I, what I tell them is our job is to give them the menu of choices they can make. And we also bring some of our own platform capabilities right. to the party. Like, we have intelligence display technology that allows you to only brighten the display, display where you're looking, things like that. Mm -hmm. And we have, you know, charging aware technology. So like, you know, you, you, you're monitoring battery levels and what kind of charge you need. And, and another thing they asked us to do is with Lunar Lake, when you unplug the system, your performance right, drops. Right. And so now they said, will you fix that please? And so, now when you unplug a Panther Lake system or a Series 3 system, the performance doesn't drop much, like right. single digit percentages. And that's something they wanted because they don't want to have people feel like they lose something when they unplug. Of course, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so last question. As you look out for kind of the next couple of years, right? I think there's, there's the milestones that were hit. I think there's a new foundation, right? Yes. Which in many ways is new and good, but also kind of similar what we had hoped for Intel, right, for a mm -hmm. long time. So it's back to those basics, but doing so now on, I think, a much more mo modern mm -hmm. foundation. So as you look out kind of the next couple of years, what are those things that you're challenging, you know, the product teams for? Where are the things that you still want to get better in? Um, again, to keep with competition across the board, but also, you know, meet all of your customer demands from, a, from a, a, an OEM standpoint. You know, I give, I give our engineering teams, like, mandate number one is leadership products but I've added something that ease system design for our customers. Because mm. I believe we gain share not only with leadership products, but making it easier for them to, to design with us. And then the second thing is focus on segments that value innovation. And so AI is not gonna be the same for everyone, but like, like the gaming systems of 12XE, we have now game developers saying, I'm only gonna use that pipeline because mm. I get better multi-frame generation. Right. Like for every, Rastered frame, you can have four 
AI generated frames. It's, it's called multi-frame generation. And that's a game changer. So people won't know they're buying AI, but they're gonna want the games that run on a processor that does that. Right. And so when, that's what I mean by that value innovation. And then lastly, I still think we're at this inflection point as an industry of AI coming to the PC and the edge. And what's fascinating this time is robotics and manufacturing systems in smart cities. The Series 3 processor is really good at sensing imagery with our image processor and then controlling motors and sensors and so forth. And so you're starting to, I'm starting to see people adopt Series 3 on edge immediately mm. because they can do things on chip and not have to go to, to do a discrete card for AI. Right. So I, I'm putting a lot of focus myself on the edge because I think that's going to be a big growth area for Intel client. Yeah, excellent. Well, thanks for joining me. Oh. Thanks. Uh, congrats on a great product launch and uh, hopefully have a great, a great 2026. Well, thanks for spending the time with us. Really appreciate you.